Hey everybody, welcome back into another fun and exciting Algebra 2 class. Today we are going to be on page number 193, page 193, and we will be looking at lesson 4.7, Composition of Functions. The composition of functions. When you compose something, uh, the idea is that you're kind of putting it together, connecting the pieces to it. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting uh, functions. Now, in, in the last lesson, we kind of did some arithmetic, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. It's going to be just a little bit different. We're going to be composing these functions or putting them together. On page 193, it kind of gives you the idea that a lady uh, is going shopping. It looks like she's looking for a washer and dryer. You can look there in the picture. And so she's looking for a clothes washer. And the uh, again, the idea of, of the text there is that they are uh, running a sale on the wash machine. And it's a sale on top of a sale. Well, sometimes you can go in and you can get a 25% discount. But the, the, the machine is already discounted. Maybe it's $100 off plus the 25% off. And so it's a double discount. Well, how much are you going to pay for that machine? Well, one way that you can figure that out is by using a composition of functions or setting up the 25% as the first part and then the $100 off as the second part. Um, and I, I'm going to show you a little bit about that right now, but I'm not going to use the exact um, one that they use. I just kind of want to show you that. You can look through it. The idea is that you would first of all do the innermost function, which once, once you see this in just a second, um, the innermost function is the $100 off. And so you take the $100 off first. Then the secondary function would be the, the outer function would be the 25% off. So then you, let's say it was $500. So you take the, um, the $100 off, so now it's $400. And then you would apply the 25% off. Then you would do the second function and um, you, know, you would get the discount. So you'd only pay $300 for the washing machine because a 25% discount on 400 is another 100. So it would be a $500 wash machine, $100 off because of the first sale, another $100 off because of the second sale. So your price would be 300. Well, these can also be used in just a number of different applications, not just for shopping and things like that, but um, that, that would be one of the, I guess, the main uses. If you look down here on the page, uh, on the screen, I have composite functions. Um, they are written like this, the F of G. Okay, or F-O-G is kind of what it looks like. It looks like fog, F-O-G, but this is not an O, all right? This is just a little, it's almost like a, a multiplication sign, but it's open. So, you know, function times the function is written like that, but this is a little different. This is function with a little open. That means uh, basically um composite okay to combine of uh, the function of g so um here's what that looks like this is important for you to understand right there when you kind of put that into a formula you're going to take the first function okay the f of x times the g of x, and that's just a function right there, okay? So this is like saying, um, this is interesting. It's almost like the g of x equals your x, okay? Because how do we write this? Uh, you can look down here. Here's an example. The function of x, but look at what the, it's almost like you take this right here, the g of x, and you put it in for the function of x. So now you're left with the function of the g of x. Okay, And that's going to be important as we start to figure out and, and put these things together of the, uh, the how-tos, Okay, how to solve it. All right, so let's go ahead and um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the function or the f of g. And then we're going to come down and we're going to do the G of F. 
we're basically going to do one with the function first, with the with the f first, and then one with the g first. So we're just going to switch them around. All right. I've said all that. I've confused you. Now let's do it, and let's get you straight in the background. So what I want to do is I want to use this formula right here for this. So I want to put the function parenthesis and now the g of x. Okay, so I'm going back to this little formula and now the g of x. So what's the g of x? It's x squared minus 2. So x squared minus 2. All right, so that's the first thing that I want to do. Now what I want to do, and, and these steps are on page 194 if you want to look at these steps as I'm going through this. So the first one is I'm going to substitute the, uh, the g of x in, where, in, in the function where the g of x goes um, in this little formula. Okay? The next thing that I want to do, step number two, is I want to substitute in the g of x, the x squared minus 2, for the x in the function of x. So what does that mean? So if I go back here and now I'm saying, here's what I've said. I've now said, okay, the function of x right there equals this. So look, that's what I've done. I put the g of x in for the x. Well, whenever you do that, like let's say that my I have a function of 2. The function of 2 equals x plus 5. Well, what I always do in that case is, is I, since that's an x, I would also put a 2 here. I substitute the x on both sides. So now the function of 2 is actually going to equal 2 plus 5. 2 plus 5, so the function of 2 is going to equal 7 in this case. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here. Instead of using a 2, now I'm using the g of x, the x squared. Here's the g of x, the x squared minus 2. So now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this in, this g of x, in for this x. Or in other words, we're just rewriting this function of x right here with the g of x inserted for the x. So now it's going to look like function of x squared minus 2 equals x squared minus 2, that's where the x goes, plus 5, okay? Or we could also say, here's what we've done, function of g um, equals g plus 5, okay? Because, again, we're just substituting that in. So what is the g? The g is your x squared minus 2. So in other words, we substitute that in both places in this original. So we take this right here and we substitute it in for this x and for this x. It's really not that complicated. I know it seems complicated, but it's really not. You take your g of x and you substitute it in to the original function in both places that you see in x. Okay? Now we're ready to go ahead and solve this thing. So we're going to come down here, and we're just going to solve this. Okay. Um, so what does that, how do we solve that? Well, if you just take away these parentheses, because you don't need them, because that's a plus sign there. If it was a negative sign, we'd have to distribute, but it's not, it's plus. So now we're just going to combine what we combine, what we can combine, sorry. It's x plus 3, or x squared plus 3. And that's our answer. That's all we have to do. Okay? And so this is the solution for the f of g. Let me, let me write that a little bit smaller. f of g equals x squared plus 3. Okay? Now we're going to do the same thing, except now we're going to switch which one we're inserting into which place. Okay, so now we're going to do the second part of this one. We're going to do the g of x, or the g of f, I'm sorry. So we're going to do the g of f, and what we want to do here is we want to put the g function now first. Before the one we just did, we had the f function first. So now we're switching them, so we're going to do the g function first. So in other words, we're going to put the g of x 
equals, um, I think that was x squared minus 2. Yes, x squared minus 2. So if we go back up here, uh, the g of x right there is x squared minus 2. Okay. And so now what we're going to do, everywhere that you see an x, we are going to insert the f function. What was the f function? Well, if we go back up there, it was the f function was x plus 5. So everywhere we see an x, we're going to substitute in the x plus 5. Okay. So now what's that going to look like? It's going to look like the g of x plus 5, because again, we're substituting in the function of x here, equals x plus 5 squared. Notice I have a squared term there, so I have to square that, minus 2. Okay, now I just want to solve this right here. And so I will go ahead and FOIL this, because that's what I have to do there to, to solve that. How do, we, how do we FOIL that? Well, well x plus 5 times x plus 5, since we're squaring it. Okay, you should remember how to do that. I won't take the time, but you do first, outer, inner, last. And you're going to come up with x squared plus 10x plus 25. Trust me on that. Some of you just did that in your head and it was easy. Others of you have to go through and do it. If you have to go through and do it, then go ahead. But this is what you'll come up with right there. And don't forget that that still has a minus 2. Okay. Now we just need to subtract 2 or combine like terms. So we, we come up with here the g function equals x squared plus 10x plus 23. Okay, so there's the g function. So the f function was when we when we substituted in the g function for it, we ended up with x squared plus 3. The g function when we substituted in the f function, we got x squared plus 10x plus 23. Now, the chapter goes on right here. I'm not going to continue this, but the chapter goes on. If you want to get a little deeper into it, you can. Um, one reason I'm not is because, to be honest with you, to give you a little secret, it's not going to show up on your test. Okay, So I don't think that this is really necessary information for you right now in your math careers. Once you get into pre-calculus and calculus, absolutely, we're going to go deeper into this. But for right now, at this level in Algebra 2, what they do next is they show you how to find the, uh, the domain and the range for these. Um, really, to be honest with you, it's, it's complicated, but not that complicated. If you want to look at it, you can, um, but I'm not going to test you on it. I'm not going to quiz you on it. So the only things that I'm going to test you and quiz you on is can you find the composite function? Okay, can you substitute, can you use this formula right here, the function, uh, the f times the g of x, can you substitute those things in for it? And notice on the second one, when I did the second one, we just switched the f and the g. So we had the g times the function uh, of x. Okay, and so this was the a one that we did, and this was the b one that we did. So to get the A and B, you just switch those right there. All right. You're going to have to practice these. These are not going to come easy to you. It's going to take some practice. It's going to take some, some you know, effort on your part. Message me if you have any trouble. Um, rewind the video if you missed anything there. Uh, take another look at it. As you're trying them, you can kind of watch what I was doing as you went through those. Okay? All right. That's all I have for you in this video. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.